My name is Kirill Gavrilov. I'm product manager for part of the services on SAP Cloud Platform. Our department mainly focuses on DevOps. The disclaimer slide, you should know it by, by far, so I won't stop in details at it. Today, I'm mainly going to talk about cloud applications. Some of them are running on new in cloud platform. Some of them are running in Cloud Foundry. Some of them are hybrid. Some of them are pure cloud native applications. But all of them have one thing in common. And this is that they should be available, right? It's like when we live in the 21st century, we as users of all kinds of applications, be business or personal, we always expect those to work 24-7, 365 days a year. So with the business applications, this is the very same case. And in order to ensure a smooth, non-stopping business of a cloud application, the companies most normally hire teams of DevOps engineers whose purpose is to exactly this, to ensure the non-stop business of the company. And those DevOps, DevOps engineers, in order to do their job, they need the proper services and tools. So that's what I'm going today to talk about, is what services and tools can help you on SAP Cloud Platform to keep your applications and solutions up and running. And in order to explain you better, I'm going to talk in, a, in the context of an example. I will take a typical cloud platform based solution, which normally consists of a couple of modules which are written in different languages. Those modules depend on each other very often. They might have some dependencies to on-premise systems or might use some cloud platform provided services like uh, cloud platform integration, let's say, where they integrate systems between each other. They very often, the cloud application used HANA, used HANA as a database. So this is quite a normal thing. And very often we use some sort of a backing service provided from a hyperscaler, right? Like Redis, Mongo, Postgres, whatever. It's something that helps the application to do its job better and offloads us as DevOps engineers of, of boring work. So whenever somebody comes to me, and asked me, Kiri, we should do something like uh, this application should be non-stop available because I'm working in cloud development like in more than, than, let's say, seven or eight years. And we constantly get these questions for the services that we develop. And a couple of questions come to my mind. And today I have chosen the three most important ones, according to me, of course. First, if we look at this whole thing, the first thing that I always wonder is how do I monitor this whole solution? Because it's quite complex. We have a lot of dependencies, a lot of different stuff going on. It's complex. And how do I understand the byte vitals? How do I understand if something with my CPU, application, CPU utilization is not OK? Or how do I understand how my connectivity is working, and so on and so forth? So this is the first thing that we are going to learn today, how to monitor with SAP Cloud Platform such kind of a cloud platform-based solution. The second question that pops out very often after the monitoring part is, how do I get notified reactively for that? I mean, it's easy to, let's say, to monitor this solution, but I, as a DevOps engineer, I should 24-7 watch a dashboard and see if some red light blinks up, and then I have a problem with my solution, which is not okay, because a lot of things happen in that solution we have constant database interactions, let's say, constant interactions with our on-premise system. And a lot, a lot of stuff is going on. So a lot of events that might harm our system. So this is the second thing that we're going to learn today is how we can instantly get notified for problems and potential problems with our, our solution. And last but not least, OK, I have the monitoring part in place. I can get my, myself notified for problems. I can know every problem that is currently occurring with my productive solution. But then what do I do next? When I get a, such a kind of a problem, I react most often. What uh, I mean <laughs> in React, I open a wiki and start following uh, recommended actions, so to say, which is, again, quite boring and repetitive task. So the next question I always ask myself is how do I automate my reactions to given kinds of alerts? So this is the third thing that we are going to learn today. How do we automate our reactions to given alerts? And how do we automate our boring day-to-day -day DevOps 
tasks in order to concentrate on more important stuff. For that purpose, I'm going to show you three separate solutions coming from the SAP Cloud Platform. First is the monitoring solution. It helps me to observe my application, to monitor it. Second is the so-called alert notification service, which provides me with the means of getting myself notified instantly via the channels I like and I use for alerting. And the third, but not least, is a brand new service that we are currently developing, developing, which is called Automation Pilot, whose purpose is to exactly this, to help you automate and react to alerts on a daily basis. And I'm going to drill down by each solution. Uh, a, a, a little disclaimer before we start, we're going to see three distinct demos. Some of them are, are on Cloud Foundry. I try to concentrate my talk on Cloud Foundry, but this doesn't mean that I don't know Neo. So if you have any questions around that, please ask me. Uh, one of the demos is recorded because simply I couldn't risk to fail, so I will explain it later. Uh, so we can drill down in the monitoring solutions that we have in SAP Cloud Platform. Talking about monitoring, what is important for you guys to know is that we separate monitoring into a couple of different flavors, let's call them. First is the internal monitoring, so these are the metrics and the, the, the monitoring data which comes from within the application. So which how we as DevOps engineers monitor our application by ourselves. And the very first part of this internal monitoring is of course the so-called container metrics or I call them vitals for my applications. It's like going to the doctor. The first thing that the doctor checks is your pulse, your blood pressure, stuff like that. So it's the very same with the application. We always need to know the CPU usage, memory, disk usage, so on, very, very basic. We call them container metrics because they come out of the Cloud Foundry containers. This very often, of course, is not enough. I mean, it's quite normal, A, as a developer, to, to have some very custom logic into my application, and into that application, I want to incorporate something custom as metrics. So we support the so-called custom metrics, which we're going to see a demonstration in a while uh, to them. So the custom metrics basically help me to plug in my very custom logic for metrics and for measuring into my application, which makes a bit broader scope of my monitoring solution. Of course, the log logs and traces are quite important uh, stuff. To be honest, when I was developing every morning, one of the first thing that I did is to open my logs and traces of the service that I, I was making and to look at them because you can understand what has happened during the night and what is going on with your application. So it, they're quite important source. And last but not least, we need a place where we can visualize this thing. I mean, we, I, we don't have to browse different UIs and to go to the to different UIs. So that's why we have the Kibana dashboard out of, out of the box in the cloud platform to visualize all these metrics and logs and traces. This is the internal part. So how we monitor it from within, but our solution is unfortunately, it's not only an internal part, it's used by users. So we need some sort of an external, so to say, monitoring. The external monitoring is basically how we monitor our solution from the outside. I will start here, we have a couple of offerings. I will start with the application logging service. Basically, basically the application logging service here provides us with additional logic and we can have a broad 360 degree overview of all the logs of our application, how they're behaving, what they are logging and saying, so on and so forth. So it's not only for, the, for a module, but everything that I need to know. The second important thing is the health check endpoints. Very often, I want to know if my application is available from outside, let's say from Australia. I want to ping it from there and understand whether it's working or not. So here I can use different externally provided services like status page and so on and so forth, which will assure for me this availability. And last but not least, if I want some more deep insights, so to say, if the internal monitoring and the logs are not enough for me, I can, as a DevOps engineer, I can hook my third party APM solutions such as Dynatrace. I don't know how many of you have heard about Dynatrace. Okay, so super fast APM solutions are, I think it comes from application 
performance monitoring so it can give us quite more broad overview of our application. I will show you a very live demo on that, how we are actually monitoring one of our services with Dynatrace. And last but not least, once we have the internal and external monitoring, what we can do on top of that is that a lot of we have a lot of data already, right? We have CPU, memory, custom metrics, logs, metrics for the, from the Dynatrace, metrics from the ex external endpoints, and so on and so forth. So with all the, this data, we can do a lot of stuff. First, of course, is to visualize it, as I already said, with Kibana. We can do all kinds of dashboards and see what's going on with our application. Second of all, which is more important maybe, is to use this data in order to notify ourselves. So this is the alert notification service, which notifies us on base of that data for problems. And third, using third-party APM solutions, we can always build machine learning scenarios on top of our monitoring data and get a, a big, broader overview. So for the monitoring story, if I have to recap, is with all these three layers, we can start slow, and start with very basic monitoring, like container metrics, custom metrics, and so on. And when, whenever our solution keeps growing, we can keep growing our monitoring ecosystem in order to get a full 360 degree monitoring of, of our solution. It really depends on your use cases, how are you are gonna use this. It really depends on your solution. So it's, there's a lot, of, a lot of options and combinations but between the, those tools. Normally, we use both internal and external monitoring for our solutions. So let's see a demonstration. What are we going to see is first I'm going to show you the container and the custom metrics. I'm just going to explore them. I, I won't drill down into the details because if we drill down into the details for monitoring and APM solutions, it will take us a separate conference to, to do this. And second of all, I will show you how we monitor one of our live solutions with Dynatrace, which is an APM that we choose for using. At the end, you can choose whatever you like and whatever you want. I will just hop myself onto the stage and we'll open my browser. So I will start with the, with the simple monitor, with the internal monitoring story. So here what I have is, sorry, here what I have is an application that I have already deployed on my Cloud Platform, Cloud Foundry account. I should click it and wait a little bit today morning. I don't have a lot of luck, so bear with me that everything will be working. I have them recorded though. So the first place where I see and uh, collide, so to say, with the container metrics in this in the cloud cockpit, but this is just for my very, very f uh, fast overview, so to say. Here I can see the CPU utilization, the memory usage, the disk usage and so on and so forth. However, I can see the logs, I cannot see the custom metrics, so it's not really the place for me to look at this, it's simply for, if I, have, I, if I wanna have a quick look, I can do it from here. But let me first open my solution, it's a simple servlet which will simply generate some uh, logs and data when I refresh it a couple of times, I don't want this to be translated. Here in a second, I will see how my CPU usage uh, increases because I have written that and it's not a good code, so <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it just increased. But if I want to have a more broader overview of everything that is going on, what I should do is to subscribe for so-called application logging service, which is free of charge in its light edition, so it's, it's nothing uh, as you pay. Uh, so here, what I see here is this nice open Kibana dashboard button, which when I click it, it will lead me to my personal Kibana dashboard where I can see an overview for my solution and to visualize both logs, custom metrics, and, uh, and container metrics. Here, the first thing I, I always see are the logs, how much was logged, I can make, I can drill down and make some detailed analysis, filter on different uh, logs. I can see which application the logs come from. What are the to total count of logs? I can fully customize this, this dashboard, by the way, so I can get a bit more visual. Second of all, I can see the metrics that I just saw in the cloud cockpit, but visualized in different, a bit different 
ways. So here what we see is a different perspective of the container matrix. So the container matrix are CPU, memory, and disk usage. And here I can play around with this dashboard and visualize for myself different kinds of different kinds of metrics. See the average CPU, memory consumption, disk usage, and so on and so forth. So these are the these are the uh, container metrics. For the custom metrics, unfortunately, I forgot that my code is on my other laptop, so I will just tell it about it. But I will show you how the custom metrics look like. For the custom metrics, it's basically imagine that you are using an API. We support a couple of open sourced APIs which help you to post custom metrics. And the example that I have used is simply what I do is I have introduced this array called custom, oh, oops, sorry, slash custom, which what is going to do every, every time it is invoked, it will increment the counter by three. So I want to um, simply measure how, how many times a servlet is invoked. So this is purely programmable, so I have coded all of this in that servlet, so you cannot see it, but believe me, it's there. And it, you can basically have the freedom to measure whatever you like, for instance, user interactions, whatever comes to your mind that is custom, it's not a problem to measure it with the open source libraries. So if I go to the Discover tab of Kibana, here, what I can see is the so-called custom metrics filter. Oops, I'll just zoom out. What I can see here is the so-called custom metrics filter. And it doesn't work. <laughs> Good. Uh, so here, in theory, we should see, I don't know why, uh, why this is now broken, but in theory, we should see some custom metrics that I have just invoked from the servlet. But as I already told you, uh, no luck today for me, but at the end, these demos are, uh, they will be recorded after the session and we have quite comprehensive documentation. So if this doesn't appear, oh, there they are, there they are. It maybe needs some time to refresh itself. But here I can see the custom metrics that I have just involved here. It's for now just one invocation of my servlet and maybe in a couple of seconds or minutes more will appear here. And if I want to go even one step further, what I can do with this custom metric is that I can visualize them in different manner. For instance, if I go to the visualize tab, I click, click the plus and here I can choose of different types of charts. Let's say gouge. I should choose the custom metrics that I like and here it's in a visual format which I can then plug in into different dashboards and have very colorful and bright dashboard in front of me to understand about these custom metrics. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it is, I think, available for new. Let me follow up on that because I'm not, I'm in the other two services, but I will follow up on that, but I think it's available for new as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. The, okay, okay, the question is, can I drive, how do, how do we get to the screen? It's very simple. Here is my global account. It's not that simple. <laughs> here is my global account. Here is my account. Here is my space. And here is my application. So you bind the logging service to an application and it gets whatever logs you have in, within that application. And here you have the logs tab where you can uh, see the Kibana dashboard. This is again well documented. I have put also links to documentation in the presentation. So no need to worry too, uh, about this. And what services are supported? Basically, we support the normal application and database logs and the custom custom metrics. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's available free of charge in Cloud Foundry okay. as well. Good. Uh, I will continue then with my slides. So, oops, I forgot something to show you guys, sorry. <laughs> it's the Dynatrace solution, so this is, I will show how we monitor one of our services. Hopefully I don't, I won't have connectivity issues. But we are using Dynatrace to get a bit more grasp of, of what is going on with our service. Here is the so-called alert notification service that I'm going to show you in a while. Here I have a bit more broader overview. I can 
drill down and check my database health, let's say. Here, what is my response time? What is my failure rate in the database? I can check my different microservices, what is their current state and current container metrics. A very interesting thing that I can do is I can see, I can even see, oops, give me a second. Uh, I can even see what are my microservices and how they depend between each other. So you can do really a lot of stuff. It's much more richer than that. I currently, I'm not a deep expert in Dynatrace, but I can assure you that it provides a lot, a lot of functionalities. Same is for most of the APM solutions that are out there. The big minus here is that you should have a license for such a solution which is paid and which are costing you some money. So it's at the end, it's, it's a personal choice, you know. Uh, I won't go into the details about Dynatrace because, again, it's quite separate lecture if you want. Good, so we know how to monitor our solution from the inside, from the outside. We can see our logs and so on and so forth. So the next question is, should I constantly watch this kind of dashboards non-stop in order to understand that something is wrong? And, of course, the answer is no because it's, it would be quite time-consuming, right? And I want to have some means where I can get notified for any kind of problem that might occur. Because if you watch all these things, as I said, a lot of events are happening that might harm my solution. My data, my, I, had, I might have some performance issue within my application. My database connectivity, okay, I know my slides then. My database connectivity might be broken or I have, might have some transactions database problem or something else. Backup might not be running. I can have some general issue with some of the platform services. Let's say my CPI flows are failing for some sort of a reason. Or I can get the hyperscaler issue. For example, my Redis instance on my AWS deployment is not working and I want to know about that. Furthermore, I can get some connectivity issues to my on-premise system. So I want to know about this. So really a lot of this is just a grasp of the things that might go wrong with an application. We constantly see new ones and new ones. So this is, this is the, the space which alert notification service addresses and helps you. Basically, what you can do with it, it's really well integrated with the platform, both new and cloud foundry environments in the very same way. So you use it in the both environments in the same way. It's, completely cross-environmental, so to say. Uh, so it is integrated with the platform and it basically proxies different kinds of alerts to a channel of your choice. For example, you might want to use Slack to understand about problems or Jira or SAP Solution Manager or Focus. So it's integrated with all of these and with we are daily, integrating it on a daily basis with different services from the cloud platform. So the idea is at one point of time to have basically quite a full catalog of alerts that you can subscribe for and get forwarded those alerts to the system of alert management of your choice, whatever you, you prefer. Yeah? So uh, these services are only in Cloud Foundry, but you configure it to monitor the new. Technically, the service lives in Cloud Foundry, but it, the new data centers are configured to use it. So you use always the closest to your new data center and you get alerts. It has a separate catalog for new, a separate catalog for Cloud Foundry. So you get different alerts depending on your environment. Good. This is the very short story of the alert notification service. And now we are going to see a demo. And these are my old slides which again I, uh, but it's the demo will be something like that. Uh, something that I forgot is first the alert notification besides the normal catalog of alerts that it provides, with, uh, which is like you will see it in a while, it provides you with the so-called custom alerts. So it provides you with bigger flexibility and pro it provides you with REST API, which by the way is uh, basic authentication REST API, which helps you to post alerts from within your application's code. So if there's something that you, we don't have in the catalog, you can call it out and then post it to the alert notification service. Another important thing, alert notification service is in general availability since June and it's a paid service. It's 125 euros per 1,000 alerts in the catalog price. 
Yeah, furthermore, we can see a demo. What I'm going to, it's, the demo won't be like that exactly because it, it, it was recorded. I'm going to make a live demo here. And what we are going to see is basically I'm going to stop this application right here and get an alert via Slack that my application state just has changed. And we can, of course, click around the alert notification UI. It is also available for both subscription and CPA-based customers. So whatever your account is, you can subscribe to it. Good. How do I get to the alert notification? In my Cloud Foundry space, I go to services. I have already created an instance. The instance creation doesn't take much. It's a standard way, so it's no more than two minutes for you to create it. And it's well integrated with the Cloud Cockpit, so you can operate this thing via the Cloud Cockpit. So what do we have in the alert notification UI is a couple of things, but most important thing is, is the so-called subscriptions. So the subscriptions are the way of, uh, of the user to tell the alert notification what are the kinds of alerts that we want to, uh, to get notified, what we want to listen for. So once this thing loads, I have already done this, but I will do it once again. Once this thing loads, uh, what I can do is simply on create, create subscription, click on create subscription. The first thing that I should do is within my alert is to uh, enter a name of the alert. So let's say my application has stopped has stopped, something like that. I can click on the Create button, wait a little while. And the next step that I should do is to create a condition. By the way, we are working on a configuration app, so you don't want have to click around the UI as well. And furthermore, we have the so-called import functionality, so you can define as well a JSON without, if you don't want, if you don't like UIs, you can import a JSON file and this will be there for you. So create the condition. Basically in that step, I'm gonna tell alert notification what is the condition that I want to get alerts about. Every alert coming from the alert notification provides you with a common model. So first I will say, let's say app state is, let's say stopped or, or, or something like that. So every alert in alert notification comes with a model. So the models are basically, uh, every, every alert has a body, category, event type, priority, region, and so on and so forth. It's a quite rich model. It's extensible, so you can use this so-called custom tax in order to extend this model and add metadata on top of that. What I can do here is if I took the event type, so, so now the big question is how the heck I'm, I'm gonna understand what to, should I write here? Because, okay, I have an event type, it should be uh, equal, uh, is equal to, it contains or something else. It, okay, it's, it has some conditional logic. At the end, if I write is equal to, so now the question is how do I understand what I write into that field? Currently, you should read which is the bad thing, right? We should open the help page of the alert notification and there we have listed the catalogs for both Cloud Foundry and new environments and this is, they are quite well described. Another option is that we very uh, often do is to select has any value, which basically means send me whatever comes to, my, to you, please send it to me and click on the create button. And the last step that I should do, uh, by the way, conditions are, uh, might be quite complex, so I can start really broad with has any value, but then I can uh, fine tune this and um, have or or end logic depending on how I set up this, so I can do really, really fine uh, filtering on my alerts. So now I'm gonna assign this alert. So the last step is to tell the alert notification where exactly I want to this alert to go, right? Where exactly, exactly I want to receive it. So here we have the so-called create action 
button which allows me to, uh, to simply say to the alert notification, well, send me an email, send me a Slack message. We support Slack threaded messages. Store the alerts for a period of 48 hours. This is done, uh, Solution Manager, this is the way uh, Solution Manager pulls out the alerts from us. We support a whole bunch of webhooks. Those webhooks also support different kinds of, uh, so to say, of um, transformations. So if on the one hand side I have a Jira system, on the other hand side I have alert notification, with webhooks I can transform the payload of my alert to match the Jira alerts. So no need to bother with me of how I'm gonna map these two different different systems that I use. Very soon, uh, a couple of weeks back, we did uh, also a POC with uh, Splunk. So it again on the very same way. Splunk is supported. So quite, quite big functionality. For example, I can say, send me an email. I can type my, let's say I will use my personal email. .com. Ah, no, this is the email, actually, sorry. <laughs> my mistake. So send me an email. Here we support the so-called fallback action. So imagine that your primary system of alert management is fallen down and you want to nevertheless understand about problems, so we, you can define a fallback action which can tell you to alternatively send you alerts. Also, you can send alerts to multiple channels, so no problem about that. I can put some description. I can add, add my email here. I have defined another, another action as well, which we're going to see right now. Here I have the action, send me a Slack message. Basically, Slack messages work with webhooks. All you need to do is to have an incoming webhook application in your Slack. I will do it like this and assign the whole thing. So this is the way that I manage alerts. And once again, we can import it via a JSON file. Let's say we have important export. Another important thing is that once I define my alert management subscriptions, with the importing export, export functionality, I can basically move them throughout environments, throughout accounts without any problem. Here I can see some summary, what should happen with my alert. And in a second from now, I'm gonna go and stop my application. What is, what is going to do this thing? This action of mine is basically gonna send me an alert that my application just has stopped, yeah? Good question. Well, the, the question, when, when did they bind the alert with the application? What happens behind the scene is that, behind the scenes that the alert notification is integrated with a lot of things, with cloud controller, with uh, monitoring service, with connectivity service, with so on and so forth. So those services take care to send us, to push us all the relevant data to us. So no need for you to bind the application. If you wanna, you can do it. But nevertheless, you're going to receive this information in the alert payload. So you will know which is the application that causes you problems. You will see it in a second. So currently no need to bind them. Uh, this will take, will come out of the box for you. So I'm gonna stop my solution. This will happen to all applications deployed in my space. If I want to, Filter it, I can use more detailed filterings because I, I, there I know, uh, just give me a second to authenticate myself if I remember my password. Hmm. Fingers crossed to this, yeah, this is one, this is the one. So basically what will happen, you will see it in the payload, you will know which is application, the application, and then uh, you can understand about the, uh, which it should come any second now if I have activated the incoming webhook properly. Uh, in, the in the alert payload, you're gonna see what is going on with, uh, which is exactly the application, and then you can fine tune it with filters and conditions and say, okay, if the, if the resource name is like this, please notify me. And now again, I'm gonna also check in parallel my mail if I received something because, yeah. Okay, I hear this, I maybe didn't configure correctly the, 
the webhook, but I will sh sh show it in the, my email. So what I can see here is which is the landscape. Of course, this is a demo account in the original scenario. You should confirm there's a opt-in option, so you won't be spammed. And uh, um, just it's it's my my personal account, so no need, no worries about that. So here, what I can see is uh, which landscape is the alert from, which is the sub account, which is the resource that sends my alert, and which exactly is the resource name, so which is the application, what is the alert type, so the Cloud Foundry, here, here we use the Cloud Controller, and this is how the Cloud Foundry guys define the start and stop alert, so they call them audit app update, so every time a start or stop application happens, it's audit app update alert, there I can see the state of my application. A lot of more detailed information, a lot of more tags that I can fine tune even further and have more broader application. Sorry, was there a question? No. We are currently working. Uh, we are very close, so we, we have two steps approach. First, we are working on an iFlow, which will be available in the CPI Content Hub, like in, I hope, in a week, I hope, <laughs> or, or very soon, let's call it like that. And you can use this iFlow, simply drag it, drop it into your, your iFlow, and you get alerts to alert notification. Then, with the colleagues from CPI, in the long term, we are working on more broad integration, so this will come out of the box for you in, in future. Uh, so the question was, should we hook this up, this email up to some SMTP relay? No. It uses the built-in the built SAP notification email. If you want to have your emails from your own exchange server, then this is another story. This is on our roadmap. We currently don't support it, but we know about this kind of requests. Good. This was the alert notification and how I can get notified for different kinds of alerts. Last but not least is how I react to those alerts. So what you're going to see now is the brand new automation pilot service that we're currently developing. We hope it will be in beta in the beginning of 2020, so feel free to subscribe for beta testing. What the automation pilot does is a couple of things. First is we have this alert scenario, right? It's the, our most important one. We receive an alert. Let's say every time I react to an alert, it's always restart my database, restart my application, collect some logs, do stuff like that, right? It's pretty common. And uh, I have a couple of options. Either do this manually, which is boring, either code my, myself some script, which is quite a lot of work there, or I can use the automation pilot to do this for me. So basically, automation pilot will provide you with means to automatically react to alerts. You will see a demonstration in a while. So whenever an alert comes, let's say, I want to restart my database. This is there for you in the automation pilot, and you can simply say, whenever an alert comes, please restart my database. The second important scenario of the automation pilot is not only alert remediation, but also to help you to automate your repetitive DevOps tasks. Let's say very often here we have an example with the transport management service. By the way, on this lecture, you can see a more broad overview of all of our uh, DevOps services. So the transport management service does enterprise quality transports from one account to another, let's say. And very often I want to hook myself right after the transport happens. Let's say decrease the severity of some logs see what's going on with, the, with my application, then increase the severity, which again is a manual work. And with the help, help of Automation Pilot, you can automate this very easily. So the Automation Pilot provides you with a couple of things. First, it provides you with the means of how you can automate your day-to-day -day DevOps task, alerts remediation, database management, such as applying updates and stuff like that, collecting data for root cause analysis, collecting clocks, um, dumps, and so on and so forth. Lifecycle hooks, as I said, in the transport uh, management, you can hook for different services, do something past some event in the service, and so on. The other important thing that Automation Pilot provides you with is a catalog. 
We are currently working on that catalog, so we expect during this uh, customer beta to be quite big and quite useful. You will see it in a minute. So this catalog basically provides you with predefined commands, we call them. Commands who, which help you to automate your job. So like restart my application, update my database. Because if you think about it, restart an application is not that simple process because first you want to check if it's false positive, you want to collect some logs, then restart it, then check false positives again, and it's a complex job. And last but not least, we aim to be very integrated with DevOps, uh, with other DevOps services. It's Kafka-based service, so it's really highly throughput. We don't have any concerns about performance by far there, so we expect things to happen very fast. So what we are going to see is the following demonstration. I'm gonna check, uh, this will be on new and will be recorded because we're currently developing the, the automation pilot and I didn't want to be broken <laughs> when I'm showing this, so I have recorded the demo. So what we're going to see, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna trigger an availability alert. Basically, I, want, I will make my application unavailable. It's a simple application which uses HANA, couple of modules, normal cloud application. Then I'm going to receive a Slack alert via alert notification message, but uh, alert notification service. But besides that, the alert notification will trigger for me as well the automation pilot, which will restart my whole system. We are talking about the database, the, secu the, the application, and so on and so forth. So here is my demo. I will simply have to make it full screen, okay? So here's the test application that we are using. It simply we can stop its availability by setting a random response time, like 3,000 milliseconds. And what is going to happen now is that the monitoring service of the cloud platform is going to detect it and will tell the alert notification service, okay, something is wrong with your, uh, with your application. Here I can see it as well in the cloud cockpit that something is wrong with my application visually, but of course I wanna, in the normal scenario, I wanna get notified for this. Sorry, it's a bit uh, hard to click, not through a new eye, but through a media player, so I will just skip some parts. Here we have a defined an alert again, which says, has any value because I'm a lazy guy and I don't want to find you on my alerts, uh, but yeah. So once we have defined alert, here we see a Slack message we say, which says, okay, you have a problem. Your application is not working. It's quite red there. It comes from, uh, from this uh, resource and so on and so forth. So please do something about this and fix your problem. And if we explore a little bit more, so the next screen that we are going to see is the automation pilot screen. So we have received the alert. Now it's time to check out what the automation pilot is doing. We have just finished the integration of automation pilot with alert notification, so you are going to see the very same messages, not only in the UI, but you're going to see them via the same channel you received uh, the notification about your availability, let's say. The automation pilot will set up uh, a message, don't worry about this, I'm taking care, I'm working on something, I will fix it. So this is the UI, it's not really final, it will be much prettier and much more convenient, we are currently working on that, so it's a really a very, very preliminary version of the automation pilot. What I see here is my dashboards here. I see what are the current, the current uh, commands that are running for me, and here I see that I have one command awaiting, which means it's waiting for my decision. One of the features of, of automation pilot is I can either fully automate a command or tell it, stop it given stages and ask me for my decision. So if I click on the waiting, uh, on the waiting list here, I can see all these executions. And what I can see here is the steps that are executed, currently executed, or to be executed into this command. The idea is here I have some input, which is every command consists of input, so some input data, some output, which is the result of the command, and some steps in between. So far, we have evaluated the false positives. This is currently a simple step, which means wait 10 seconds, then wait 30 more, and if the, if the application isn't okay, then continue to next step. So the application wasn't okay. So it has triggered the recover application step. This is a step from the catalog, 
what the recover application will do is basically to restart my Java application. It's a Java application that I'm using now. It waits for my confirmation because I have said so. So basically when I, conf I, will, when I click on the confirm button in a second here in the upper right corner, it will ask me what do you want to do? And here I can, here I can take different actions just to see when I, I'm gonna click on that button. <laughs> uh, give me a second. Okay, I'm gonna click now. So here what I see, again, this will be much more beautiful in the, in the sorry, stop. Uh, this will be much more beautiful in the final UI. So here I see my application held. It says your application is not quite well. It has an error 500 so on and so forth, what do you want to do? And here I have predefined some steps like uh, restart my application, check its health again and so on. So here if we go to the drop down, what we're gonna see is I can choose between restart my application, do nothing, I don't care, let it be broken or restart my applications and check its health again. So I will choose the restart my application option which will automatically trigger the restart of, of the Java application itself if I play the video again. Sorry, it's quite hard with this video demo, so I always prefer them live. Uh, good, I will click on the click on the restart application button, click on the confirm. So now Automation Pilot will continue its normal job and will restart the application for me. If I go back to the cloud cockpit, what I'm gonna see now is that in my application, it's currently in state stopped. It will be in state starting in a, a second. So the, the automation pilot behind the scenes is doing the job for me without me taking any actions if I want. Meanwhile, we, while we wait the, the restart application to happen, is we can explore the alert notification a bit more. One important thing that you must remember is that we provide catalogs. So we provide SAP catalogs which help you with, which have predefined steps. And the other thing is that you can build catalogs and comments on yourself. Basically such kind of comment normally would take me, let's say an hour or two uh, to build and to, to run and to test and so on and so forth. So if you have, if you want something very specific, again, you can uh, build it on your own. I will just jump to, to the catalog. So here we have the catalog which are owned by me. We can share catalogs between each other. So if we have colleagues who from another department who are developing for something, they can share it with us. We have the provided by SAP catalogs whose purpose is to uh, provide me with lots of steps. Currently this is not the final state. We have a lot of more steps here, but here we have uh, steps like start application, stop application, update database, check database connectivity, check if my database backup is running, and so on and so forth. So really a quite big and broad catalog. We, of course, are going to grow this catalog based on your feedback. So it's quite important when you start testing it. It's, it's based on your feedback is how it's, your, it's gonna grow. And it's one of main uh, features. So meanwhile, I will fast forward a bit. Meanwhile, my, my restart application step has finished and now it waits for my action again. So here the next step is evaluate application health and if needed, restart my database. So not only the application, if I want, I can restart my database. So here I can, uh, if I click on the confirm button, I can see that I can say problem is resolved. You don't have to do anything, which is this case scenario. The problem is resolved after restart or check my database system, then restart it, then the script will continue and restart your database for you. Again, this can be fully automated. What we practice usually is we make a scenario, we pinpoint the vital steps which need our action, and once this is quite stable, we simply remove, remove the manual action and this run fully automatically. We are already using it in some parts of our, of our uh, DevOps day-to-day -day tasks. Good, uh, here I would just simply confirm that everything is okay and now everything is finished. Back to the slides. So if we have to remember, you have to remember something from that session is that with the monitoring service, you can ensure both basic and advanced monitoring of your solution based on SAP Cloud Platform, sorry. 
With the alert notification service, which is now GA, you can get notified instantly for any kinds of issues with your solution. And furthermore, you can receive those notifications via the channels you want to use, such as SAP Solution Manager, Focus Trans, Slack, Jira, whatever. And last but not least, with the brand new upcoming automation pilot, you can automate your reactions to alerts. You can automate the boring day-to-day -day DevOps tasks. And call for action, what you can do from now on, you can try out the monitoring solutions, you can give us feedback. We are working on quite comprehensive guidelines and best practices there. You can visit the hands-ons for the alert notification service, try it out, click around it, and so on and so forth. And also with the automation pilot, you can get in touch with us for better testing and we can always provide you with more information. Yes. Yeah, you, you mentioned that when it's planned to be available. Uh, the automation pilot, uh, our hopes it, it will be beginning of the next year. Beginning. Yeah, yeah. This of course might change due to some stuff. Uh, in the end of the presentation, I have linked some useful links so you can check them out. Don't know this slide, it's all about the learning experience. Yeah, continue with your tech learning journeys. Here we have the related uh, sessions that are related to this, to this lecture. And really big thank you if you have some questions.